Where does the North stop being the North? Is it where it becomes the South? Or is there room for middle ground? Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to places. And today I want to talk to you about one place in particular, a place in these United States, a place that recently became my 26th state and a place that was named for the wife of an English king. And that place is Maryland. The Old Line State, the seventh of its kind admitted to the Union in 1788, is a state of about six million people and is roughly one-eighth the size of the entire United Kingdom. But there's just one question. Where the heck is it? Now, this might seem like a strange question from somebody that visited the state as recently as two months ago. But hear me out, because while I'm quite aware that Maryland is sandwiched between Pennsylvania and the Virginias, there seems to be wild discrepancy as to which region it belongs to. Is it the South? Is it the Northeast? Is it the Mid-Atlantic region? I mean, heck, it might even belong to an excavation dig in Utah, seeing as how it resembles the mouth of a dinosaur. The point is, having had similar questions about Oklahoma and Florida, this is yet another piece to the puzzle. Answering this question could take me one step closer to finally understanding American geography. What's that? Part of Minnesota is in Canada. Never mind. But this much I do know, the state of Maryland is definitely not pronounced Maryland. Furthermore, it is widely understood to have been named for the Queen Consort of England, Scotland and Ireland, Henrietta Maria of France, the wife of King Charles I. Indeed, it was he who granted the English politician George Calvert a colonial charter for Maryland in 1632. Fast forward to 2019 and the state seems to have an identity problem. According to the United States Census Bureau, and I'm not making this up, Maryland is one of 16 states belonging to the American South. This completely and utterly a little bit blew my mind. I mean, it's it's totally at odds with everything I thought I knew about Maryland. I mean, just visually, not that that seems to count for much, it sort of looks not Southern. Indeed, the Agricultural Research Service, also known as, well, ARS, places the state in the Northeast, while a US geological survey compromises on the Mid-Atlantic region. So which agency is correct? To find out, I did what any deadline-stricken journalist would do. I asked people on the internet. First dibs went to my brilliant patrons at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. I posed to them the following poll question. In which region would you place Maryland? And a whopping 84% agreed with the US Geological Survey that the state belongs to the Mid-Atlantic region. The Maryland is in the South theory lagged far behind while the Northeast wasn't even on the map. I was, I was being figurative, you... Surely then that's case closed. End the video right there, Lawrence. Give yourself a barely earned rest. But not so fast, because while my patrons are among the greatest human beings who've ever lived, and while they are most certainly growing in number, that number alone doth not a reliable data set make. Which is why I also went to Twitter. There, my sample size saw an ample rise. 68% were all in for the Mid-Atlantic, but you'll notice it was a little bit closer this time. A quarter of all respondents said that Maryland joined the likes of Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont in the Northeast. Very few, however, agreed with the Census Bureau. Finally, I unleashed this question onto the biggest sample size of all my YouTube subscribers. After a whopping 5,600 of you voted, the final results were thus. Almost a third of you were in alignment with us. Read into that what you will. But once again, very few agreed with the Census Bureau. And here's my second question of the day. Why is that? How can the Census Bureau's definition of the South be met with such overwhelming opposition? And since it is, what is the Census Bureau's criteria for including Maryland, not to mention nearby Delaware? For answers, I needed to mirror our paleontologist friends in Utah by digging a little deeper. So let's sink our teeth into each theory and carefully examine the near-complete body of evidence, from least popular to most. The most southern tip of Maryland is roughly 250 miles closer to the most northern tip of Maine than it is to the most southern tip of Florida. So it's little wonder that only 6% of you placed Maryland in the south. In straight line terms, not a single part of Maryland is in the lower half of the eastern portion of the United States. So why did more than 300 respondents insist that Maryland belonged to the same region as Mississippi or Alabama? Well, it comes down to three words. Line, Dixon, and Mason. The Mason-Dixon line. 
When King Charles I granted the Calverts the Maryland Charter, the land was supposed to encompass everything north of the Potomac, up to the 40th parallel line of latitude. This should have been easy. Enter King Charles II. In 1681, he granted a charter for the neighbouring state of Pennsylvania. Its southern border would have intersected Maryland's northern border at the 40th parallel, except it didn't, and still doesn't to this day, because Charles II, the absolute muppet, used a badly drawn map. Long story short, a border dispute ensued, leading to violent disagreements over property rights, which precipitated a seven-year war between Maryland and Pennsylvania, because the British. Eventually, the dispute was settled when both sides agreed to recognise their mutual border as that drawn up by the astronomers Charles Mason and Jeremiah Dixon. The Mason-Dixon line was born. But what has this got to do with the South, you might ask? Well, that very region is often referred to as Dixie, named for the Mason-Dixon line. More importantly, it applies to the states south of it. So, hello Maryland, you are part of the South, except are you? Because Dixie is also historically defined as those states that seceded from the Union. Now, while there was a push in Maryland to join the Confederacy in the 1860s, and while it remained a slave state at that time, Maryland ultimately did not secede. Fast forward to the latter half of the 20th century, and Maryland's culture and dialects have been increasingly influenced by an influx of people from the North East, which may account for theory number two. Arse jokes notwithstanding, the Agricultural Research Service, presumably for the purposes of agricultural research, breaks America up into five distinct regions. Maryland, not to mention the Virginias, are included in the Northeast. But how applicable is a map that also puts the whole of Wyoming in the Great Plains? Well, a third of poll respondents agree with Arse that Maryland is in the Northeast, though their reasons were not exactly based on agricultural science. Indeed, one of the leading justifications was that Maryland belonged to New England. <laughs> <laughs> Try telling that to the states of Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Vermont and Rhode Island. You know, the states that actually belong to New England. Not to mention, you know, after New England, you still have to navigate the likes of New York, New Jersey and Pennsylvania before even coming face to face with Baltimore's Rex. That's what Maryland was called in the Cretaceous period. In other words, Maryland is quite a way down the pecking order and at some point we have to ask ourselves the question, where does the North stop being the North? Is it where it becomes the South, or is there room for middle ground? Having grown up in England, I'm compelled to argue for the latter. After all, a large portion of England claims itself as neither North nor South, but as a mysterious region known as the Midlands. And so if you just shift this concept 3,000 miles across the Atlantic, what do you have? You have this. I think this Twitter user put it best. Maryland is the most Southern of the Northern states, and the most northern of the southern states, hence Mid-Atlantic. Indeed, two-thirds of respondents seem to agree. But the Mid-Atlantic region is not as straightforward as you might imagine. Just as the Midwest is not as central or western as it once was, the Mid-Atlantic region stretches as far north as Upper New York. Indeed, New York was once the breeding ground for the Mid-Atlantic accent, spoken by various presidents, public service announcers, and basically every actor and actress of the golden age of Hollywood. That's my best attempt. The region also includes Pennsylvania, a state that requires you first to sail the Delaware River into Delaware Bay before you even reach the Atlantic. Meanwhile, Maryland's over here all like, hello, we literally have a place called Ocean City. Beachfront property could be yours for just $3.2 million. And so to the casual observer, Maryland should be the very definition of mid-Atlantic. And yet the Census Bureau disagrees. So isn't it time things were updated? I mean, the United States of America became independent from the British well over two centuries ago, and yet the Mason-Dixon line, the crux of the Maryland is Southern argument, is about as British as it gets. I mean, Charles I, Charles II, the Calverts, William Penn, and best of all, Mason and or Dixon were all natives of the motherland. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm all in favour of claiming some lingering bragging rights here. But if you're a Marylander and are proud of your independence, you really need to identify as mid-Atlantic, says the Brit assertively. Please don't kick me out. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. 
In the meantime, that's it for this episode. Please click the subscribe button to ensure that my videos don't get lost in the pond. And a big shout out to all of my patrons who make this channel possible. Without you, none of it would be from the writing, the research, the technical equipment and Baltimore's Rex. If you would like to become a patron of the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. All patrons will have access to my secret live stream and those pledging $5 or more a month will get that plus my secret podcast and more. Until next time, whether you're in the South, the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic, or an excavation dig in Utah, have yourself a very brilliant day. Goodbye. Thank you for watching this episode of Lost in the Pond. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and if you would like to support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash lostinthepond.